Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where we look at a cool PowerShell module every Monday. This Monday I'm looking at PS Graph. PS Graph is a PowerShell module uh, that provides a set of utilities for working with GraphViz. GraphViz is an uh, open source visualization tool that you can use to generate diagrams using uh, what they call dot files. So a dot file is just a um, a syntax that they have that allows you to pretty much define diagrams. So um, uh, in this case, we're defining a diagram that has three nodes, a start, a middle, and an end node, and then it's connecting those uh, nodes together with lines. So uh, the idea is that you could diagram, you know, systems or, uh, you know, connections inside your environment, that kind of thing. So as you can imagine, this is pretty powerful inside PowerShell because you can use lots of your system commandlets to produce diagrams based on your system infrastructure and that kind of thing. So what uh, PS Graph mainly does is it actually takes, um, it has a bunch of PowerShell functions that allow you to create these dot files without writing the dot file syntax yourself. So you can use the, uh, the um, commandlets from this module and it will produce that dot file syntax using a domain specific language. So this is an example of the uh, PS Graph uh, PowerShell script. And there's a couple different things that you'll notice here that we have a diagraph function and we're passing in a script block that contains the elements of our particular graph. And then we can say edge, start, middle, and end. And then it's gonna de define these edges um, inside our dot file. So let's actually take a look at what that looks like. Um, if I paste this into my console, you're gonna see here that I end up with this diagraph uh, dot file, um, or graphviz dot file. And you can see that we have the nodes defined and everything, and it's ready to be used with graphviz. To actually uh, visualize this and have graphviz produce an image, what we can say is export PS graph and then show graph. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna export it to a temp directory. Uh, there's parameters on export PS graph to save it to certain places and that kind of thing. But if you just do this uh, default thing here uh, with show graph, it's actually gonna pop it up in the default photo viewer. And now you can see that I have a graph that has uh, these three nodes, start, middle, and end. And then those edges are kind of, you know, connected with, uh, connected with arrows. All right, so let's kind of get into the, the, some of the configuration options that you can do. So um, one cool thing that you uh, realize really quickly with this is that, you know, it's just PowerShell and you can do things like this. So rather than, um, you know, defining those things uh, statically, I could have an array of whatever and pass it into my uh, diagraph function here, and then it could produce a graph based on that. So in this case, it's going to produce the same graph that we just saw. Uh, but uh, you can see here, I use an array uh, and a variable to my edge function. So rather than um, statically defining graphs, you can actually dynamically define them based on things that you may look up. For example, looking up, you know, uh, servers or uh, file system uh, folders and that kind of thing. And you can store those as objects and put them as edges in here and then produce a graph. Um, in addition to uh, kind of the basics there, you can also define attributes for edges, um, nodes, and uh, the graph itself. Um, one of those uh, attributes, for example, uh, that you can define are uh, labels. So this will actually label the, the edge. And when you pass in arrays to from and to, it will actually uh, cross join all of the elements inside those arrays. And when I run this, what you're gonna notice is I end up with a graph where everything's pointing at everything kind of thing. Um, and I added the label woe to uh, each one of the uh, edge connectors. So each one of the lines has woe on the label. Um, there are ways to uh, kind of customize um, the graph even further. So right now we're using the edge commandlet and what or function and that would what that does is pretty much defines the nodes for us as well as the connections between the nodes. But if you want more control, you can actually use, oops, you can use the node function. And the node function allows you to specifically define those nodes um, inside your graph. So if I run this, you're gonna see I have the same chart that I saw before. Uh, the only difference is that I uh, define my start and end node and then I drew the edges of my diagram using the edge commandlet. 
Um, so I was talking a little bit about attributes earlier. And um, like I said, you can set attributes kind of all over the place. You can set them on nodes, you can set them on edges, and you can actually set them on the chart. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm creating a graph that has a start node um, and I'm specifying the shape star and I am then creating an end node and that is going to be the shape uh, note. Uh, I'm com or connecting all of them together with the start, middle and end. And then uh, finally, I'm setting an attribute on the graph itself and setting the background color to blue. So now when I output that, you're going to see that I have a star and um, my end has a note and then uh, the background is blue. So there are a ton of options that you can specify. If you go to the documentation here and look at node, edge, and graph attributes, there's a very big list of attributes that you can actually specify for uh, various elements. And you can just pass them in as a hash table to uh, the element that you're trying to modify. Um, another important concept is the uh, concept of ranking. So um, when you get like a very complicated graph, you may want to uh, kind of organize how things are lined up. So I have um, ranked two, four, six, eight, and then following that rank, uh, one, three, five, and seven. So these will appear higher in the graph than one, three, five, and seven. So even though um, uh, my graph would be, you know, completely top to bottom if I didn't rank it like this. But since I'm ranking these two, it ends up as like two different rows. So you can see two, four, six, and eight, and one, three, five, and seven, because I ranked the ones higher than the lower ones. Uh, it kind of helps you organize how your uh, chart is going to uh, line up. So rather than having one tall chart, I have this uh, kind of nice compact chart that I can look at. Um, and now, finally, I want to uh, show off subgraphs. So subgraphs is another concept where you can actually have a graph inside a graph. So I took this example directly from uh, the README. And if I paste this, it's going to look a little complicated, but we're going to step through it. So uh, first of all, I have some web servers, API servers, and database servers. Uh, I have my overall graph here called Site1. And then I have two subgraphs. So I have subgraph zero, uh, its attributes uh, has a label of DMZ. And when you create a subgraph like this, it's actually going to put like a, a box around that subgraph. Um, so you can kind of denote that this is in the DMZ. You've probably seen uh, you know, diagrams similar to that. Uh, and then we have uh, another subgraph, subgraph one, that contains um, in, or it has the label internal. And you can see here that we are kind of outputting various nodes, ranking them, um, you know, setting some shape attributes on them, and defining edges between uh, them. So you can actually define uh, edges that go in between the two different subgraphs, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. So now you can see we have our DMZ on top, the load balancer, which then uh, points down to the three web servers. Uh, and then the web servers talk to the various APIs, which is then in the internal uh, subgraph. And then the APIs both talk to the database. So pretty much you can define some pretty crazy graphs uh, directly uh, inside PowerShell. So this is a pretty cool module because uh, I think overall it's pretty simple. I think once you get the hang of it, and um, it's really cool to be able to kind of take your existing system data via PowerShell scripts and just kind of output these simple uh, diagrams uh, using GraphViz. So today we looked at uh, PS Graph, which is a set of utilities for working with GraphViz uh, inside your PowerShell scripts. And if you like more videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel.